Um, my name is Aaron Waite. I am the, uh, I guess, the person who founded Waite Vision. I'm glad you came tonight. It's kind of a, uh, a first of the, of the kind for us, at least, where we're actually doing a live procedure and inviting people to come and watch. So thank you for coming. I'm, I'm actually really glad that you're here. It should be a lot of fun, right, Mike? Yeah, I'm excited. <laughs> <laughs> this is Mike Sutton. Yeah. <laughs> he is brave enough to, uh, to go through this. Mike, why don't you just introduce yourself for a minute? Uh, so I'm Mike Sutton. Um, the reason why I'm doing this, you're probably wondering, is I hate wearing contacts. I dry my eyes out. Um, I race mountain bikes, I wakeboard, I snowboard, and I hate having to put them in. I also hate when I travel and then you gotta, you know, you say you forget one or something, you gotta hurry and try to figure out plan B. And so, so I'm excited to be able to get my vision correct. So. You're gonna love it. Yeah. It's, it's gonna be awesome. So um, a couple of things, I wanna thank Broadway Media for coming out. Uh, they're providing the, um, the audio visual for us tonight and their expertise, I'm glad that they're here. And also Capriata's, if you had a sandwich, those guys are awesome. Um, I'm from Las Vegas and uh, we had Capriata's down there and absolutely love it. So feel free to grab an extra one on the way out as well. Um, we'd love for you if, you, if you're interested at all, talk to anybody here. All of us can help answer questions about vision correction. Um, if you want to sign up for an evaluation, any of the girls back here will be able to get that done for you. That's not a problem at all. The first thing you'll notice is we have a big white laser in, in there. That creates the flap for us. Now initially when LASIK was, after they approved it, was with a, essentially a blade that would create the flap. Now we use a computer guided laser and the laser essentially holds the eye still so the eye can't move at all. Even if you try to blink or, or move your head, it, it can't move. You're going to be just fine. And then the next thing on the second part, we have a second laser here where the second procedure, where, the, where we actually reshape the cornea, that's also changed in the sense that the, the way it lays down and changes the shape of the cornea is different. It takes into account a larger treatment so that your pupil size doesn't matter anymore. It's more accurate as far as getting the vision corrected. And from what we understand, it ends up being quite a bit more permanent, if you will. Right. So it is possible for it to change over time. I've had patients now who will come back, say, 17 or 20 years later yeah. and they have a little bit, little bit of a prescription and we can, we can fix that as well. We can right. just change it. It's not a problem. Anyways, why don't we uh, go ahead and get started while well, you're, you're here to see the procedure. So let's go ahead and get done. Mike, you ready? Let's do it. Okay, let's get your hat on. All right. <laughs> First off, looking out the windows, we're putting the blinds up for you. Okay, can you can you see the restaurant over there across the street? I can see the restaurant, but it's blurry. Okay, you can tell that it's a McDonald's. Yeah, just from the yellow. From the yellow, can you read the letters? The McDonald's letters. I got no shot at that. Okay, all right. Now above that, there's some shops up there that have names on the sh on the shops. Can you tell me what the third one over is at all? I can't see any names on. Okay, those. all I see is a brown building. There's a blue bus on the side. Can you see that up there? I can see blue, but I can't see it's a bus. Like a blue ball. Yeah. Okay, all right. That's Let's see if that changes after we're done, okay? Okay. LASIK itself is not necessarily considered a sterile procedure where you do a full gown, but it's still considered clean. So we use sterile, uh, sterile gloves and essentially a clean or a sterile technique for it. <clears throat> all right, Mike. You ready, buddy? Let's do it. <laughs> now, go ahead and just relax. Look all the way down towards your feet. Good. And because I like you, I'm putting in a lot extra of, numbing, of the numbing drops here. Look way up here towards me. Nice work. Okay, you doing all right then? Okay. Now I'm going to move you in position here. You'll see that there's a little ring of light there. That's what you'll be looking at during this actual portion of the procedure. Now it's normal during this part. This is a, what we call a lid speculum. Holds the lid open it's normal for it to just kind of be a little freaky. It's different, it's not anything that you've ever really done before. But you're doing fine, all you have to do is just look straight ahead right there. Good, nice and clear, just keep on looking right at the green light. Good, that's it, don't look anywhere else. Perfect. Still looking at the green light? We are. Perfect, you'll fill my hands here. Ready. Okay. Now this is completely computer guided. It's creating the flap. And in just a second here, it'll start to get a little bit blurry. That's it, you're doing great. That was perfect, nice work. So the flap has officially been created on that side. You did an awesome job. Okay. I'll take that little lid speculum out. Good. Okay, same thing. 
Go ahead and just look all the way over to your left. Good. Look way over to the left. A little pressure there. <clears throat> I'm gonna hold your lids open for you and just relax your forehead there. Great, now look straight ahead. You can see the green blinking light inside there. Oh yeah. <clears throat> Perfect. Okay, same thing. This will come closer, kind of freaky, but you can see that you don't feel that, correct? I don't feel mm. Nice. <clears throat> and it'll get blurry here in just a moment. You're doing great, we're almost done. Perfect, nice work. That's it. All right, so on that part, what we did is we did flaps in both eyes. The laser controls everything, essentially. It comes with and touches the cornea and holds the cornea in place so you can't move at all. Even if you tried to move it, you wouldn't be able to in order to keep everything stable. Now I'm gonna move over here to this side and we'll get started on the second laser here. So that's really the thing that holds most people back is just the idea of having somebody or something touch your eyes, if you will. All right, Mike's coming over. Good, hit right on the headrest. All right? Totally good. Good. Mike said he was totally good, unquote. <laughs> And we're using blankets because we do keep the room a little cold. It's always 68 degrees in here. And that's because that's the temperature that the lasers like. And we want to keep it as consistent as possible. So this room is always 68 degrees. The chance of an infection is extremely rare, but we take every precaution possible to avoid anything like that. So the flap has been created. I'm actually going to lift it and lay it back onto this little small pillow, if you will, that's small and made for the eye. So it just is nice and relaxed here. Good. Now my things might move around just a little bit. That's normal, but you're doing great here. It just feels different. You've never gone through this before, if you will. Okay, that's perfect. Now, just look right at that green light. Don't look anywhere else. And I'll get it centered here for you. Perfect, that looks great. Okay, go ahead, Brandon. 10 degrees. No problem. 50%. 50 is good. Confirm center. Okay. You go center. Perfect. Laser ready. Okay. And Mike, just look right at the green blinking light. Don't look anywhere else. You're doing great. Perfect. That's great. So that treatment was actually exactly five seconds long. So in order to correct your vision, the laser treatment itself really was only five seconds, which is amazing. Okay, now I put the flat back down. Hold on to that for me. Good. And now look straight ahead at that light there for me. What I'm doing here is just getting that flat back exactly where it needs to be. A little fluid underneath. That's basically it. All right, you okay? Totally good. Okay, you survived. First eye's done. You're all set. I'm gonna turn your head over just a little bit. Bring your chin up just a little bit more. Does this part hurt at all, Mike? No. He says no and he's laughing. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't felt a thing yet. He says he hasn't felt a thing yet, so that's good. And same thing, look over to the left. Bring your chin up just a little bit. There you go. And look way over to the left. A little bit more. There you go, that's great. Nice. Okay, you just relax there. Both eyes kind of just relaxed. Okay, chin up just a little bit. Nice, let's get this centered for you. Okay, can you see the green blinking light there? Oh yeah. Good, same thing, that's what you'll be looking at the entire time. Okay, now just look straight ahead at that green light, don't look anywhere else. Perfect, hold that for me. And I'll take the sponge. Okay, Mike, straight ahead of the green light. That's great. Hold that right there. Three degrees. No problem. 50%. Okay, that'd be great. Confirm center. Yeah. Okay. Give center. Okay. Laser ready. All right, Mike, look straight ahead of the green light. Don't look anywhere else. Good, I hear that buzzing noise. 
treatment is complete. Nice work. The side was only six seconds of treatment here. And just look straight ahead again at that little green line. Good, that's great. Thank you, Serena. Good, and same thing, I wanna make sure that this flap lays down exactly where we want it to. And this heals entirely, almost overnight. The first layer will heal over this flap so that it's really not accessible after the first 24 hours. So Mike had the question before of, is it possible to lift the flap? And the answer is once it's healed, not really. You really just can't get in there and lift it. Um, unless you had some instruments and you were trying to lift it with sharp objects, and that's not a good idea. So don't ever try to do that, okay, Mike? <laughs> Two drops there, Mike. You are all set. And medicated drops here. Perfect. Okay, same thing, just relax. We'll take this little speculum out. Look down just a little bit. Nice. Good job. Sticky tip coming off here. Sorry about that. And we'll get this piece off. Okay, I'll take a wet. Cool. Keep your eyes closed for a moment there. Nice, so we are officially done. <clears throat> Mike did a great job, that went perfectly. So, Mike, you feeling okay? Yeah. Okay, can you read the McDonald's sign now? I can see the M, I can see everything on that McDonald's sign. Nice, okay, now, I asked you before about there's some sign, there's some uh, businesses up above that, some outlet malls. Oh yeah. Can you see those now? I can see the vans? <laughs> Keep on going. I can see the blue van over there. <laughs> That's right, is it a blob anymore? No, I can see it actually <laughs> really clear. That's crazy, I can see that whole V-A-N-S. That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Wow. Skechers, can you see that? I can. Calvin Klein? Yep. Sweet, <laughs> I love it. That's crazy. How was it? It was, it was completely painless, I didn't feel a thing. Okay, so no pain at Easy. all. Easy. Okay. Now, when you were looking out there, you weren't playing with me as far as not being able to see the building before, and now you can see them out. I couldn't read anything before. And now you're reading like this For one. sure. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah, that's crazy. That's cool. Okay. Questions. Let's hear it. And then also raise your hand, and then Tina's got a mic. Should you take your hat off so people can see your beautiful hair? Yes. Okay. There you go. Yeah. I'll take it Hi, it's me again. Yeah. Um, so. Does he see now how he's gonna see, or is there improvement still? Like, is it heels? Like, how? Great it's a little question. cloudy. Yeah. Yeah. It's, well, uh, yeah. I remember that being like even having to go home and sleep for a little bit. Like, yeah. You know. Definitely, that's a good question. Yeah. So, so right now, what what I usually tell the patient is, it's gonna be like as if you had been swimming in a pool with your eyes open. It'll be hazy for a little bit with halos and whatnot, and then it goes away. Yeah. So everybody's a little bit different. So what I'll do is um, after we're done, I'm gonna go um, take a look at his eyes and check his vision just for fun, just to see where he's at. Even though I know it's a little bit blurry immediately afterwards, when he comes back tomorrow, it'll be better. Usually by the one week, it's even better than that. So it's a slow progression each day gets better and better. So, and you'll, you'll live through that, so you'll tell me about it next week. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> touche. So. <laughs> right, other questions for Mike? All right. Before going in, what kind of hesitations did you have or did you have any hesitations, you know, as you were making the decision whether or not to do LASIK? So I, I would say the hard part for me was the eye exams. You got, you, they, they test every, everything in your eye, and it, I mean, it doesn't hurt, but it's just, um, after I got done with that, like I had, I asked all my questions, I really didn't have any hesitation. Yeah, it was pretty easy. I'm a blinker. <laughs> so when people say don't blink, I blink. So I was a little worried about that, but yeah, that was actually pretty easy. Open your eyes, he, he closes them. Uh, yeah. But you can see that he, he did well. I mean, I, I can tell Mike, Mike is what you call a blinker, where it's, it's natural to have that, um, the reflex to, to protect your eyes. That's totally normal. You, yeah. We're built like that. So somebody doing a procedure or putting drops in your eyes can really be scary. Even though that's the case and we know that he's a blinker, he still did fine. Everything yeah. went great. And, and during the actual treatments, the first laser holds the eye so the eye won't move. The second laser tracks the eye. So if, with micro movements that you can barely even see, it still tracks it so that it'll treat everything exactly where it's supposed to be treated. So, so even if he moved his head out of the way, it would stop, and when he comes back, it would restart again. Yeah, it's pretty high tech. <laughs>
Yeah, so the question, <laughs> if, he, if he coughs or sneezes, will it throw everything off? The answer is no, he'll be fine. So even, even during this first laser, if that little, um, the little cup that holds against the cornea, if it comes off, it's okay. We've, we've already trained in our minds how to deal with that scenario. If it comes off, we can go back in and put it right back on and restart exactly where we left off. So we've already thought about all of that ahead of time. So, but yeah, it, it, the, the, the chance of that happening is so rare. But you're concerned because it could potentially happen, right? It, you don't even have to worry about that. So, good question. So, um, before you decided to do this procedure, did you done any uh, research? I did. I actually read a lot about it, just on the internet. So, so what makes you come today? To come today? You know, honestly, that's a, good, that's a great question. Um, I think for me, the reason why I finally decided to just do it is I'm just tired of dealing with contacts. Um, like I said, I race mountain bikes and I get dirt in my eyes and stuff and you can't, you know, it's like you're trying to get that dirt out or, you know, I do, um, I do a mountain bike race that's 100 miles long and I've had my contacts come out halfway through. The problem is I can see things up close but far away I can't see. And so when you're racing mountain bikes and you can't see far away, you can't judge rocks or things like that. So it's, for me it was just a no brainer. I just had to do it, so. Um, when you come to the that, I don't know the motion, um, they open their eyes and it kind of looks like a map out eyes. It kind of looks like what, I'm sorry? Mapping out. Okay. Uh -huh. is, is there a particular reason for that? On, uh, on this first laser, yes. you mean? Okay. Well, what this laser is designed to do is it creates the flap. So there's a few measurements that we plug into that laser so that it knows, first off, the curvature of the cornea. It also knows the prescription. We plug that into the laser ahead of time. And so that it, it knows, um, you know, the green little light, if he's nearsighted, it makes it so that he can see it clearly because I wouldn't want a blurry, you wouldn't want a blurry green light in there. Does that make sense? The mapping of the cornea, we do that actually ahead of time. This room right here is full of machines that we just measure the eye with from front to back so that we know that Mike's officially a candidate for LASIK, that it's safe, that his cornea can, can, uh, can, we can change the shape of the cornea without causing weakness or any problems to the cornea. So since you put the flap back over mm -hmm. manually by your hand, mm -hmm. how do you get it exactly right? Good question. Hand? So how do we make sure that flap is where it's supposed to be afterwards? Mm -hmm. So when you place it back down, it actually has edges like this. So when you lay it down, if it's off to the side, it'll slide back where it needs to be. But I'm looking at that through the microscope too, so that it goes exactly where it's supposed to be and I can see the edge. When I'm sitting there afterwards, I'm pretty particular about, I got a little sponge and I can see exactly, I could dry it up, so I can see exactly where the edge is. Is it lined up perfectly? Oh, not quite. I'm gonna go back a second time and lift it and reposition it and lay it back down. And then I check it and then we're good to go. That's awesome. So, and most of the times with this type of flap that's created by a laser, it's, um, I wouldn't necessarily call it foolproof, but it's pretty foolproof. Meaning like, mm -hmm. you just need to get it really close to where it needs to be and the cornea does the rest. So overnight, tonight for Mike, that edge will seal over the very first layer, will completely seal, so that little edge of the flap will essentially be healed. So the first layer of the cornea is now officially intact and the second layer where the flap is is protected by the first layer, so you can't actually access the flap. Does okay. that make sense? Mm -hmm. so, Total sense. Good Thank question. you. What's the full healing time that uh, he'll go through, or anybody, any candidate goes through okay. from the time that they can see right after the operation until they have everything healed and the full, the, the maximum uh, ability to see clearly? Okay, great. So what's the full healing time? Uh, it's different for each procedure. That's why LASIK is pretty common is because the healing time is so fast. So the reason why we do a flap, you lift the flap up, you reshape the cornea, set the flap down, the flap acts like a bandage and it heals very quickly. So that within, by tomorrow, he's gonna to be seen great. By one week, essentially, the healing process is getting to the tail end, if you will. So if he wants to, he can go back to work tomorrow. I'm not gonna restrict, restrict him. The only thing is gonna be, I'm, I'm gonna tell him, don't swim in a pool for a week, don't swim in a hot tub for a week. You can take a shower, that's not a problem. Don't rub your eyes for the first week, you know. Obviously, don't, don't rub your eyes anytime, really, if you can help it, but, you know, just, uh, you know, especially during the first week, just be careful not to get up there and really rub. But the healing time is very fast after LASIK. Now, LASIK's not the only method of vision correction. It's just the most, the most common or the most well-known. Another technique is called PRK, and in that technique, if a cornea is not quite as strong as or as thick as it could be, 
Instead of creating a flap, I, we just remove the epithelium or the first layer. Just remove the first layer altogether, then reshape and allow the first layer to grow back. The reason we don't do that on everybody is because the healing time is longer. So it takes a while. So the epithelium takes about three to four days to heal. It's a little uncomfortable during that time. Once it completely heals, the vision is a little bit blurry and then it slowly gets better over time. Like the vision gets better from that point. But it's a process and we like to have an, a, a one day to the next result. Do you know what I mean? We want to have fast food and we want it now. But So it's nice to be able to have that almost miraculous visual recovery. But sometimes it's worthwhile to go through the longer recovery if the cornea isn't quite as thick as it should be. So other techniques, um, one of them is called an ICL, which is a lens that can be placed inside the eye. If a patient has a really high prescription, it may not be safe to do LASIK or PRK, in which case we put a lens inside the eye, which can correct the full prescription. You, you could even be, you know, for example, Mike today, if you heard, is about a minus two, minus 250, something like that. Um, if you're a minus nine, it's a different ballgame altogether. You know, it's, it's trickier to hit that with LASIK. And so using an ICL that can correct 100% without even changing the shape of the cornea at all. And then sometimes a patient will come in and they're say in their 60s or 70s and they're like, hey, I want to get out of my glasses. Well, actually LASIK is, may not be the, the best option. The best option may be to actually replace the lens that's inside the eye. So we're all born with the lens. When we're young, it bends really well. Um, as we progress through life and get more experience, the lens doesn't bend like it used to. It, it doesn't quite see up close. So then you have to start wearing bifocals or readers. And then um, at that point in time, the lens becomes somewhat dysfunctional. It's been great for the last, you know, 60 years. And now it gets to the point where, okay, the lens isn't quite as clear. It doesn't bend like it used to. In that case, we don't do LASIK. I'll just replace that lens. It's the same exact procedure as cataract surgery, but the patient may not have a visually significant cataract. Now when you hear the word cataract, all it means is the lens inside your eye becomes cloudy. So we replace the lens. It's the, essentially the same procedure. Lens exchange is essentially the same thing as cataract surgery. So each one of those has a slightly different healing and they're all pretty quick. Most of the time patients can get back to functioning pretty quickly. Even after PRK, which is one of the longer techniques, um, the eyes oftentimes the next day will feel good. So by the, this third day, they're back at work. So. Great question, thanks. What are the expected outcomes based on how bad your eyes already are? Should you expect 2020? Should you expect somewhere close enough that you'd never need glasses again? What's... Good question. Okay, so if you come in, to, okay, well, if a patient comes in to see me and we measure that the vision is 2020 or better, I always expect to get that result afterwards. So I'm expecting 2020 or better afterwards. Some patients will come in and the best corrected we can get is 2030. Those patients oftentimes will get better than that. Um, after the procedure um, because the vision is corrected in such a way that their eye can perceive the images better. So for example, patients who come in and they're a minus nine or a minus 12, they may only see 2025 or 2030. And after the procedure, after getting an ICL, for example, they'll be seeing 2020 or 2015. 2015 is better than 20, 2020. So I, when it comes to eyes, like you, you would want your, your eye surgeon and your brain surgeon, for example, to be OCD about stuff like this. This is one of those things that I'm very OCD on, so I make sure, listen, if I haven't, if I haven't hit the target, I, I feel like I've done something wrong. Does that make sense? So the patient is gonna feel like everything's perfect by the time we're done. Does that make sense? So it's really rare that we'll have to do a second treatment, for example. Um, every once in a while, if there's high astigmatism, we may end up doing LASIK and there's a little left over, we'll go back a second time and treat it and it's completely gone the second time. Does that make sense? Some prescriptions are like that and usually I'll tell the patient ahead of time, in your case, we might need to do two. Most of the time we don't have to. Maybe one to two percent of the time we do. So, but we're aiming for 2020, 2015 or bust. <laughs> so, yeah. Go ahead. How long does your vision need to be stable? So if my prescriptions right. changed in the last year, is there like a recommended waiting time to have LASIK? Okay. You know, does that make sense? Yeah, I mean, we like to see stability in the prescription, but there's plenty of misconceptions out there. So some people will say, well, I'm too young or I'm too old or my prescriptions change or I have astigmatism or this or that or the other. Vision correction encompasses all of those things. Like those are understandable things that we can deal with. Your prescription, most of the time, if you're above a certain age, most females will reach ocular maturity by about age 18 or so. So usually through the 20s and 30s, it tends to be pretty stable. 
Um, if you're concerned about changing, what we can do is we get a, a, a data point, then we check it again later to see if it's the same, or we may compare it with past data points like past prescriptions from a year ago or two years ago. And if it's within a certain you know, uh, threshold, then it's relatively stable. You may get a prescription change in your glasses, but that doesn't necessarily mean that your prescription has changed. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. It may be that from one day to the next, there's a slight change in the axis of the astigmatism, but that doesn't necessarily mean after we do vision correction that it will continually change. Does that make sense? Yeah. So if it were to change, going back to your question, it can be corrected. So, um, you know, if uh, it's very straightforward to go back in and, and do an enhancement even 20 years later if we needed to. Hand that microphone back here. Question? No, not a so dumb question. So when you at all. say you replace the lens, what yeah. do you replace it with? Is it's it an, plastic? This is a great question. Sorry. All right. Just wondering. Yeah, so the, the new lens that goes back inside the eye. Now, when we do these procedures, it's a two and a half millimeter incision. It's very small, essentially microscopic. The old lens comes out by ultrasound. It gets broken up into pieces and removed. The new lens gets placed in, it's folded up. When it goes inside the eye, it opens up within a matter of seconds, if you will and it sits exactly where the old lens used to sit. The new lens is made of plastic. It's in a type of acrylic, and it's designed specifically for the patient's eye. So with all these measurements that we do, I know exactly what lens I need to use. Do I need to correct astigmatism at the same time? All of that is a known entity, if you will. So does that make sense? Yeah. And the new lenses will last you the rest of your life. You don't have to clean them. You don't have to remove them or replace them. They just last. It's not like a joint replacement, like a knee that could break down over time. It's a non-moving part, so it just does its job for the rest of your life. So once it's done, it's done and you're set. So, yeah, it's pretty amazing. And the technology has improved now, so that type of, of surgery, if you will, which used to take a long time in the past with a long recovery, now takes about 10 minutes in a routine case. Patients can get back to work if they're really anxious to the next day. If you're diabetic, yes. do you have to... Good question. If you have diabetes, so first off, if you have diabetes, usually what I like to do as an ophthalmologist is I want to dilate your eyes and make sure that there's no blood vessels that are bleeding or that are leaky in the back of the eye. That's just important to find out how that is with diabetes. So any diabetic patient that comes in will do a dilated exam to make sure that that's normal. The next thing is I usually ask how the A1C is. That's a, a blood test that sees what the average blood sugar was over the last three months. If that's in the normal range, then usually I'm not too worried about wild fluctuations of the blood sugar, which could potentially um, affect our vision testing. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So if the, if the diabetes is relatively controlled, it usually doesn't affect much of what we do. So diabetics can still get cataract surgery, they can get LASIK if it's well controlled. And um, yeah, that's, that's about it. And then also it's always good if you're diabetic, you always want to have your eyes checked anyways. So have a dilated exam. All right, so here's the next question that you're, you're all dying to ask. How much does it cost, <laughs> right? That's going to be one of the, the first thing is, I'm scared. The second thing is, how much does it cost? Those are the two most, the biggest things. So we'll all address it. Um, first off, the real question here is, how much are you going to be paying for contacts and glasses over the next so many years of your life until you end up getting cataract surgery and then we fix your vision anyways? Right? So you're going to be, you're going to be using that for a long time. So if you're wearing daily disposable contact lenses and you're using them for the next 20 years, it's going to cost you probably 20 grand or something like that, you know, or more. Uh, if, you, if you wear your contacts at night and you use the same pair for a month at a time, maybe it'll cost less. But you could get an infection and then that's a, that's a problem, okay? So don't do that. Uh, but um, the, the cost is a whole lot less than what it would otherwise be for the alternatives, which is glasses and contact lenses. Does that make sense? The other thing is, what's the price that you can put on waking up in the morning, being able to see, and just going and not thinking about your eyes? So Mike mentioned travel. When you travel, you always have to pack all your stuff in your, in your suitcase with you. And then what if you lose it? So one of, the, one of my patients um, was going on a big trip to India and she lost the, one of the bags that had her contact lenses in it. And she said the trip was not as fun as it otherwise would have been with being able to see everything. Does that make sense? So it really is a game changer as far as, far as just living life. So what we charge for LASIK is $2,850 per eye or $5,700 for both eyes. And we, the, our philosophy here is we usually don't do any discounts at all because that's just what we charge. We've charged policemen and teachers, school teachers that price in the past, and so we wouldn't want them to feel bad if we were giving discounts left and right. Does that make sense? So it's very common for you to hear, okay, let's do LASIK for $250 an eye. Um, I think that that's somewhat of a marketing gimmick to try to get you in the door. 
I worry about trying to shortchange your vision, if you will. I wouldn't try to bargain shop, that kind of thing. Um, what you're, what you're going to want is high technology, a surgeon who cares about you, who wants to make sure you have the best result and does everything in his power to make sure that that happens. Does that make sense? So, um, you know, if it, were, um, if it were up to me and I needed brain surgery, I'd go to the really experienced guy who had top technology. I would not bargain shop that one at all. Um, we do have financing. So obviously it's, it, it can be difficult to, to say pay for that all up front when you're normally paying contact lenses per month, right? So we have payments per month that are 0% interest. Caden and Jordan are in back. Can you guys stand up? Okay. Caden and Jordan both work with UCCU. We do our financing through UCCU and what they do is they can make sure that you have 0% interest financing over the next 24 months. They're very easy to work with. As far as a financing company, they're probably the best out there. Um, they've, been, they've done a great job for a, a large majority of our patients. Um, okay, so in regards to finances, it's less expensive. The other thing is it's actually safer than contacts um, because there's a certain risk of infection that you have with contacts. And most people who wear contacts, let's be realistic, we'll probably sleep in them at some point in time, if not every single night. Some patients come in, they seriously sleep in them every night. But that, that is, there's a certain inherent risk of infection with that that you don't get with a one-time procedure. So, and then of course, the, just the uh, easiness, the ease of life after getting it corrected is something that you can't quite put a price on. So.